Hi everybody, in this video tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this cute Robbie the Christmas Robin uh, mini crochet bubble uh, for your Christmas decorations. And if you like this mini bubble here, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification um, bell because in future videos I'm going to show you how to make this mini jingle bell and this mini crochet Christmas pudding. So without further ado, let's get started on our Robin. To make the Christmas Robin, you will need three yarn colors, brown, red, and this saffron, yellow, orange color. I'm using here Sheepy's Katona yarn, but any similar weight yarn will do. If you use a different um, weight yarn, just bear in mind that the size, the final size of your ornament will differ. This one is quite small. It's about one and a half to two inches wide and tall. So if you use a larger weight um, yarn, you will have a larger um, ornament in the end. I am pairing my yarn with a three millimeter hook. I will also need something to snip my yarn off with, a darning needle. Uh, fabric glue is optional, but it might be helpful. Um, a stitch marker. And then I will also need a piece of twine or, or string um, to make the loop for my ornament. This is about eight inches long. And then to fill it, uh, you can use yarn scraps or anything like that, but I have some toy stuffing here. So let's get started with our ornament. The first thing to do is to make a magic circle using yarn brown, uh, the brown yarn. So as always, take your yarn, loop it around your fingers here, creating a cross on the underside, like so. And then take your hook, put it underneath the first um, piece of yarn and then pull the second one with your hook. And then again, go under that second piece of yarn like so and pull it through the other loop on your hook like so. Make sure you don't lose it. And then in this magic circle, we'll make six single crochets. Um, I'm using US terminology here. If you're following along with UK terms, this is a double crochet for you. So put your hook through the magic ring, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both loops. And that is your first single crochet. If you want a more detailed tutorial about the single crochet, I have one in my channel and I will link it in the description box below. But let's go ahead and repeat this another five times so that we have six single crochets in total. So this is our fifth one, one, two, three, four, five, and our sixth one. If you are having trouble remembering how many stitches you have or um, you find it easier, I would recommend using a stitch marker so you can always know which one is your first um, stitch particularly when working our increases and decreases as we will from now onwards. So now we will work a round of uh, increases. So take your hook, pull it through, um, put it under the both loops of your first stitch and make a single crochet like so. And then in the same stitch, make a single crochet as well. So for the second round, and here I will place my stitch marker in that first stitch just to make sure that I don't forget where I started. And for this round, you will just repeat by doing the same, working an increase on every stitch. So at the end of this round, you should have 12 single crochets. I have now finished my uh, second round and I have 12 stitches. Now you're more than welcome to just slip stitch into that first stitch, but I just like to have a continuous um, circle. So in this third round, we will do an increase in our first stitch. So that means two single crochets in that first stitch. Replace your stitch marker as always, to keep track of where you are. And then in the next stitch, we will just work a normal single crochet. And then we'll repeat, uh, we'll repeat the sequence of one increase with two single crochets in one stitch followed by a single crochet on its own in the next stitch 
a long art piece. And we'll repeat that for a total of six times. And at the end of all this um, round, you should have 18 um, stitches on your piece. You will then go ahead and make another round of increases once you finish this uh, round in order to get to 24 stitches. You will work this increase by doing again one increase, so two single crochets in the, your first stitch followed by two single crochets. So one single crochet and then another single crochet in the next um, stitch. So that will give you a total of 24 stitches. So here I've reached the end of my row with 18 stitches, so I can show you exactly what I mean. And this will be our last row of increases, our last round of increases rather. So work two single crochets in the first stitch, replace your stitch marker, like so, and then make one single crochet in the next two stitches, like this. Now at the end of your um, round, you will have 24 stitches. So I'll go ahead, finish this round, and then I'll meet you um, for the next round. I'm just about to finish this round now. So I'm making two single crochets in one stitch, followed by a single crochet, and then another single crochet. So for the next two rounds from here onwards, we will just make single crochets along our stitches, which means we will just retain the same number of stitches we have now, which is 24. So just like normal, go ahead, make a single crochet in each of your stitches, Remember to replace that stitch marker so that you know exactly where you started your round and go ahead and make the next couple of rows. I'll meet you when I've done that so that I can tell you how we can progress. So I'm about to complete my last stitch for my second um, round of single crochets. But this will be the, the last round where we use our brown yarn. So I'll go ahead and snip this a bit here so that it's easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. Um, but what I want to do is I want to finish my um, stitch here, this last stitch, with the red yarn because this is what we'll be working with next. So just like normal, take your hook Go under the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, but then hold your brown yarn um, with your fingers, hold it as tight as you can, and loop over your red yarn and finish with that, okay? And then what I would like you to do for the next um, round is to slip stitch in the back loop only. So you've got two loops that make your stitch. This is the front loop, and this is the back loop here. So we will do a row, a round rather of slip stitches just in the back loop. Once you've made a couple and your piece is fairly stable like this, we can make a little knot here in the back. And you don't really need to weave in that end because that will be the back of our piece. Um, so it can just be part of the stuffing if you like. So here I've done a, a double knot here. And it should be secure enough. And I will also replace my stitch marker. Though for this round it's fairly visible. Which is the um, first stitch we worked on. Since we've made a color change. And just to note that this string here, which is the end from our magic loop, this one is worth um, kind of securing in place with your darning needle, but we'll get to that a bit later. But this one here with a knot, um, you can just leave as is. But let's go ahead and make slip stitches in the back loop of each of our single crochets. Again, I have a more detailed tutorial about how to make slip stitches, 
but in this case we go through the back loop, we yarn over, pull through and then pull through the loop. Oh, that was on our hook. One thing to bear in mind is because you're not making an increase here, just make sure that you're not slip stitching too tightly because we don't want to alter the shape, um, the circular shape that we've worked hard to create. So if you find that you're making your slip stitches a bit too tight, just give yourself um, a bit more room and just pull your hook a bit to make sure that your yarn isn't um, crocheting this um, too tightly. So I'll go ahead and make slip stitches all around my piece. I should still have 24 stitches and then in the next round we'll make another round of single crochets and we'll place those single crochets in the back loop and that will just give us a more seamless connection if you like between the two colors so you can see here you don't see one color bleeding into the other um, as you would normally have if you just went ahead and just um, made single crochets right after so here I will uh, make an invisible join or rather an invisible slip stitch because as much as possible I do actually want the two red colors to match the two ends of that circle so I'll go ahead and put my hook through that slip stitch from the back like so under one loop let's get it under both loops like that and then pull that loop from your working yarn through that first stitch like that Okay, and then turn your piece around. Just make it quite tight and then chain one. And now we will make a single crochet in the back loop of our slip stitches. So again, the first one will be a bit tight, but here we go. That's our first stitch. Replace your stitch marker and then go ahead and make single crochet stitches in the back loop of your slip stitches. Now I'll go ahead and do that across my piece and I'll meet you back at the end of this round so that we can start our decreases. So here I have made um, my round of single crochets and now I want to make one round of decreases. At this point um, you may want to just make sure that the top half of your piece is looking good um, because as we make the decreases it will be harder and harder to access that um, part in the middle here. So what I like to do is I like to turn my piece inside out and then very quickly secure with my darning needle this tail from our original magic ring and you can do this a bit more neatly when you're doing it at home but just a couple of times here and there just to make sure this doesn't open up at any point And we don't need to weave in the whole um, string of yarn here, the, the tail of the yarn that is left, because um, again, this will be the inside of our ornament, so it's unlikely um, it won't be visible, so you don't need to worry about that. Now, while you have your piece um, looking inside out, it's also a good idea to um, place your loop. So just take your darning needle and go through the center of your piece with um, 
your string. Mine is quite thick, um, but it should go through eventually. There we go. And you can basically go through the same top loop, um, basically the middle of your magic ring. And then all you need to do here is create a little knot. You can do one or two knots depending on how secure you want this to be. I think one knot is, is plenty. And just tighten it like so. Then you can pull it through and if needed just add a little dollop of glue so you know it's not going to go anywhere. And now we're ready to continue our decreases. So to work our decrease, well, we'll work that always at the beginning of our um, piece. And what you will do is you will take your hook and you'll go through the front loop of your first stitch and then the front loop of your second stitch and you'll just yarn over, pull through both loops, yarn over and pull through two. So essentially you're making just a normal crochet but you're picking up both front loops of two consecutive stitches. And then here I will just make two single crochets like that. And then I will make another decrease, just in the same way. Pick up the front two loops of your stitches and make a single crochet. And then make two normal single crochets, one in each of the next um, two stitches. So you'll continue in this pattern across your piece. And what this will mean is that from 24 stitches, you'll go down to 18. So it's a reversal essentially of the increases that we worked previously. So I'll go ahead, I'll finish that round and I'll meet you at the beginning of our project again. Now I've done my first round of decreases and I will go ahead and work another round of decreases. So just like before, we'll work a decrease in our first couple of stitches by going through the front loop of two single crochets and single crocheting them together. I will also replace my stitch marker and then I will make one single crochet in the next stitch. And just repeat that across your entire piece. At the end of this um, round you should have a total of 12 stitches. So now let's go ahead and place our um, safety eyes. And what we also want to do is um, add some of the stuffing. So I think I would like them here. The first thing I will do is, like I said, it's a couple rows above the seam or where the two colors join. And let's say one, two, three. This looks about right. So play around, make sure you're happy with how it looks. I'm quite happy with this because it gives me enough space uh, to place the little triangle that will be his nose afterwards. That's also worth bearing in mind. And here I will just take these little tabs and secure the safety eyes in place. And the little robin is starting to take shape. And then the next thing I want to start doing is I want to put some stuffing in here. Um, when we do one more round of decreases, the opening will be quite tight and will be really hard to get um, quite, you know, a heavy amount of stuffing in there. So try and do this now. And then what we will do in this round is you'll just make six decreases. So decreases basically all along your stitches. So essentially what we've done is we've started with six single crochets and we will finish with six single crochets just to give that circular shape to our ornament. Now you can take your stitch marker off, give yourself 
um, a bit of a tail. Snip off your yarn. Take this off the hook. And then what you want to do is push this aside. But with your the help of your hook or otherwise, just try and put some stuffing in the piece. So I'll work on that. And while I fiddle, you can do the same and I'll meet you back to close the opening of our little robin here. So now with a darning needle, just go ahead and go in and out of all your stitches here on the top of all of six of them and sew this opening closed. And then all you need to do is weave in those ends and you can also secure them, um, secure the end of your, your yarn by going in and out of the ornament. Um, but what I like to do is to just cinch it closed like this and for added security, I do a tiny knot that no one will ever see down here, like so. And then I go through my piece a couple of times, also looking at where there might be some gaps from when we created our, our decreases. And then just snip this off And there we go. So the next thing we will do is we will make the wings of our robin. To make the wings you will just need to make a magic circle with your brown yarn and again you will make six single crochets into the magic circle. so and these are very easy to make they take absolutely no time just get some more yarn and here you will make an increase in the first stitch in the first single um, crochet that you created again just make sure that your hook goes underneath both loops of that stitch and make one two single crochets Repeat the same in this second one. Let me try and bring this a bit closer to you so you can see it a bit better. So like so, and make one single crochet, two single crochets in that same stitch, and then make a half double crochet. So yarn over and you'll place that in the next stitch, pull through um, yarn over and pull through a loop. You'll have three uh, loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through. And then in the same stitch you will make a double crochet. So again yarn over, go through that stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. And then you'll make in the next stitch another two double crochets. Like so. Let's see here. And then you'll chain one, snip off your yarn, pull it through, and those are your little wings. And what you need to simply do is take your little um, robin and just place them so that they intersect, they're in the middle essentially of um, where the two colors meet. Of course, if you prefer, you can put the wings further back. You can put them wherever you like. What I like to do is just make sure they're somewhere in the middle of where the two colors meet um, and a couple of stitches back so that you can still see them a bit from the front when the robin is facing you. So make two of these wings, um, sew them in place or glue them in place. I'll go ahead do that now and meet you back to finish our robin by making its little beak. Just take a small piece of yarn, it doesn't need to be too much from your saffron. And then with your darning needle, you'll make a little 
beak for your robin. The key to this one, I think, is just to be um, not to be too tight with how you sew. So as you probably see from here, I created a little triangle and then I used the um, string to just sew around the two triangles, the two vertical lines here, just to fill it in. So decide where you want your beak to be. Here I have about close to like four. I would say um, stitches between my two eyes. So what I want to do is go maybe here and then take my needle down to this middle bit here. So we'll say this. goes a bit like this. It sometimes takes a bit of finessing. I always leave a bit of a longish tail on this side in case I need to close any gaps or anything like that. And then I go on that slip stitch and I go back to the stitch that I initially went through like this. And it doesn't look like much at the moment, but then I'll go through this stitch here again and just come right next to it. Again, I'll make sure that I'm not creating knots and making things harder for me afterwards. But that's kind of the little shape you're looking for. And you want to start um, filling in, if you like, your triangle from the bottom. I think that gives you a better finish. And all I literally do is I just loop this just around like that. And I don't make it too tight because that will just um, create, um, basically distort the shape of the little triangle. And I will push it along a bit with my fingers if I Feel that it needs to, you know, sort of come together a bit better. And that's how it's done. just make as many of these loops as are needed um, for your little beak to be complete. Like so. And then what I like to do is just take that yarn, get it to the back, make sure you don't go, you don't, you're not splitting any yarn. Like so. And then with this, Go to the same part and make one more loop. You're coming through that same spot. Yeah. And now you've got a little beak. So I hope you've enjoyed making this robin pattern with me. Um, if you give this a go, I'd be delighted to know. So let me know in the comments below. And as always, a detailed pattern instruction um, blog is available on my website. So go ahead and have a look at that and uh, watch out for the other ornaments coming in over the next few days and weeks. Happy crochet!